Welcome back to Cooking with Chef Daddy, everyone. Tonight, I'm gonna to show you how to make a proper steak pan-seared restaurant style. So the star of the show is a steak. Couple of pasture-fed ribeyes from Belmondo's. Um, they are from the Gimpy area. And that's what we're gonna be cooking tonight, all right? And it's gonna be very simple. We're gonna have butter, rosemary, garlic, salt and pepper, and my favorite thing to go with steak is blue cheese. All right, steak. You'll notice these are pretty thick, 25 mil thick. Um, you notice that they're sitting out at room temperature. That's how you want your steak. They've been sitting out for about half an hour. So you want them to get to room temperature before you cook them. You still have a bit, you can still have a bit of chill on it. But that's because if you put your steak your ice cold steak in a hot pan, you're just gonna cook the outside and the center is gonna remain really raw and you're gonna have that shitty looking, well done outside circle and the raw in the middle. Don't do that, all right? So we're gonna season our steak. So we got some salt here. A bit of salt on top and you're probably thinking, that's a lot of salt, Chef Daddy. And you know what? It is, but you're only seasoning the outside of it, okay? And you want it, you want to taste the salt when you're eating your meat. And then, some cracked pepper. Now, if you got a good pepper grinder, it would take a lot less time, but I am too cheap to go buy one, so I just deal with this piece of shit that I have here. There we go. Okay, flip her over. Same thing on this side. All right. I like a good amount of cracked pepper on the steak. Get that little pepperiness to it. There we go. All right, so I got the beautiful ribeyes here. My favorite cut of meat, actually. And you want something with a really good amount of marbling on there. If it doesn't have a good amount of marbling on there, it's gonna be terrible, okay? Like that's what kind of meat, if you go buy it from Kohl's or IGA, that's what you're gonna get. Just a shit, chewy, sinewy piece of meat. When you get out of something like this, you spend a couple extra dollars, go to your local butcher shop, support them, and get something really good. And it's gonna be like moo on moo with the cheese here. And let's talk about the blue cheese for a second. The blue cheese is from France. It's called uh, Blue Dauverge. And um, most Australians probably can't pronounce that, but uh, it is a French blue cheese and I like it because it's a bit soft. Hey, hey, dogs, dogs. <laughs> and I like it because it's a little bit softer. So you can spread it on your steak, it's awesome. All right. Steak cooking time. So, canola oil. A couple tablespoons. And you're gonna add the butter in a bit, but you need that canola oil so the butter doesn't burn, okay? Because the butter's got a higher smoking point than that. And always go away from you. Like that. Keep it moving a little bit. And when you're cooking steak on a barbecue, yeah, you don't want to touch it. But when you're cooking steak in a pan, you want to keep it moving around, all right? And always have a good spoon with you when you're going to be cooking steaks in a pan with a lot of butter, like I'm going to show you. Because you're going to be basting it a lot, okay? So basting. What we do is we add the brown butter in here, brown it, and we're going to be basting a lot. And I've done a lot of basting in my life. I've actually been basting for probably more than half my life now. And um, I've basted in a lot of places. And in fact, some people in the kitchen would call me a master baster. And I've been perfecting my craft over the years. So let me show you how it's done. It's been a couple minutes. We've got a good, we're starting to get a nice sear on there. So now I'm gonna add my butter. I got this on high heat, but this is a pretty shitty pan. So if you got a good thick bottom pan that heats up really nicely and evenly, then you probably need it on like a seven or eight. 
I don't really know what temperature that is. But I got mine on high. Okay, now the butter's melted and browning, you're gonna add your garlic and your rosemary. You can use thyme or whatever, but now what this is gonna do is that is gonna flavor your butter. And then you can start master basting all over it. All right guys, so we've been doing this for about two minutes on one side, now we're gonna flip it over. Got a nice caramelized color on that. And now, the basting begins. You got all that butter in there. And you go like this and you keep basting it throughout the cooking. Okay, so now that all that butter is gonna flavor with the garlic and the rosemary. And you're gonna be cooking your steaks in it. When you're gonna get that brown butter flavor on there, it's one of the best ways to cook your steak. So how about, then y'all think your steak is about two and a half minutes on each side, and then we're gonna let it rest, okay? So like that, and then throw the cooking. Like that. If you need, if your steak's really thick and you gotta put it in the oven, then take it out every minute or two, give it a quick base, put it back in. And that's what we do in the restaurant, okay? All right, so we're done the cooking here. So I can put it on a rack or something, or my ghetto spatula like that, just get a bit of air under there while it rests. Okay? So now, always let your steak rest. The thinner it is, the quicker the resting time. The smaller the piece of meat, the quicker the resting time. This, let it rest at least five minutes, okay? And then that cooking will get very evenly into the middle and it'll be like a perfect medium or medium rare, whatever preference you like. But you have to let it rest. Don't cut into it right now. If you do, it's a no-no. Bad. Spanking. No. All right, the steaks have been rested now for a little over five minutes. I got your blue cheese, this is how I like to do it at home. You get the blue cheese and you spread it on your steak. Remember, residual heat. It's just gonna melt it just a little bit. So a good aged piece of meat will actually have a slight moldy flavor to it, like a good mold, you know? So that's why the blue cheese goes so well with it. And if you get a nice red wine and drink that with every bite of the steak, it's one of the best things ever. That's what I love to do at home on my days off. Just baste and, you know, eat steak. <laughs> so, I'm gonna give that a little spread on there. Just like that. So all that flavor is gonna get in there. And even if you don't like blue cheese, I suggest that you try this, because it's unbelievable, okay? Fuck! Why? I did it again. Why, did you? I, I cooked it perfectly, okay? So it's all medium rare all the way through. It's all nice and red like that. There's no well done mark around. Every time I tell you, such, oh, unbelievable. So one for me. I did it again, again. And then one for my lovely wife behind the camera. And there you have it, a steak with blue cheese basted with brown butter and garlic and rosemary. Uh, my favorite way to use steak at home. And that's it there, guys. Thank you very much.